Hello everybody. Today we're going to take a look at how to use the units of zero and one when we're multiplying and dividing. So we're going to learn a couple of general rules that are really good to know when you multiply and divide any number by one and when you multiply any number by zero or divide zero by any number. So first of all, let's start with just three times four. I know this doesn't have a one or a zero, but you'll see where I'm getting at. If I wanna represent three times four, I'm going to draw three groups with four items in each. And I know I can skip count to find my total four, eight, 12. So I know my product is 12. What would happen if I get rid of one of my groups? Let's check. Let's say I get rid of this group. How does my multiplication sentence change? Think about it. And hopefully you said it would change to two times four, because this time we have two groups of four with a product of eight. Well, what if I asked you to take another one of our groups away? How would our multiplication sentence change now? Well, now we only have one group. And one times four, one group of four, is simply four. What if I turned it around and said four times one? What would that look like? Well, the first number often represents the number of groups, one, two, three, four, with one in each. You could represent it like this. And even that, you can see there's a total or a product of four. Hmm. I wonder if you're noticing something about when we multiply by one. Let's take a look at another one and see if you've got the hang of it. Think of, to yourself, what do you think happens when you multiply any number by one? Now let's test and let's see if that's the case. Let's do one times six. In this case, if I model it like my first one, I'm gonna make one group and I'm going to put six in each group. Well, there's my one group of six in each group, and what's my total? What's my product? Six. If I want to model it as six times one, I'm going to make six groups, and I'm going to simply put one in each group. And how many total do I have? Six. What do you guys notice? Yeah, if you said any time you multiply by one, you just get that number, you're totally right. So here's the new rule you want to remember. Any number, and I really do mean any number, guys, multiplied by one, uh, let's use the word times one, equals that number. Whoops. Okay, that's an important rule. Any number times one equals that number. I'm gonna like highlight it so you remember like this is really important, okay? So if you even get something that looks maybe tricky to solve, like 342 times one, what will you get? Well, just 342. All you're telling me is you have one group of 342, so it's still gonna be 342. If I said one times um, one million, what do you think one times one million would be? Yeah, you're right, it'd just be one million. So any number times itself, or times one equals that number. Okay, anything, any times you, any time you multiply by one, it just gives you that other number. Okay, let's take a look at what happens when you multiply by zero. Okay, actually, let's take a look at when we divide by one, because it's similar. If I go back up here to my examples, here's my first visual here. If I want to write a matching division problem, I'm going to start with my total four, divide it by the number of groups I made, one, and how many were in each group? Four. Let's take a look at the model next to it. I still have four total items, 
This time I divided it into four equal groups. And how many went in each group? One. See how that works? Let's take a look at the sixes. I have six total dots divided into group one big group. That means that all six will be in that one group. In this case, I took six dots, divided them into six groups, and because there's six items in six groups, there must be one in each group. So that leads us to another important thing, important rule. I'm gonna erase this right here for a minute. Okay, if we look at the division, we also know any number divided by one, oops, let's put this in a different color, any number divided by one equals that number as well. See how that works? So that's right here. Any number divided by one will equal that number itself, also here, okay? Also, in addition to that, we have another rule right here with these guys. What do you think that rule is? Think to yourself, see if you can figure out what that rule is. Yeah, if you said any number divided by itself equals one, okay? So these are some really basic important rules that you need to know about multiplication and division with ones and zeros. Any number times one will equal that same number same rule with the division. Any number divided by one will still equal that number. And then conversely, on the other hand, any number divided by itself will give you one, okay? Now let's take a look at zeros. Zeros are a little wonky. What if I asked you to represent this equation, four times zero? What would that look like? Well, Let's think about this. Our first number is going to represent our number of groups, so I'm going to make four groups. And then the second number is how many in each group. So how many dots will I put in each group? Yeah, nothing, right? I'm not going to put any dots in each group. So how many dots do I have all together? Zero. I don't have any dots. What if I had... Let's do it with sixes again, I guess. Six times zero. Well, let's put it underneath, I guess. Six times zero. I would have six groups. Zero items in it. So it makes zero. If I turn them around, zero times four, that would suggest that I have zero groups of four. I have no groups. I can't even draw any groups. So it doesn't matter how many items to put in each group because I don't have any groups. So I'm still left with zero. Same if I did zero times six. No groups of six means I've got nothing. I've got zero, okay? So any number, that's our another rule. Any number times zero well, I should write that as times. Times zero equals zero, okay? Actually, I'm gonna write it as the word. Any number times zero equals zero. So again, even if I gave you a big number, 1,472 times zero, well, I just have zero 1,472s. So I'm still left with nothing. So any number times zero equals zero. Now with division, division's a little funky with the zeros. If I wanted to do zero divided by three, I can do that. So that means how many items, zero, divided into three groups. So I would represent it like this. Here's my three groups. 
but I have no items that are being divided into the three groups, so I'm left with zero in each group. That kind of makes sense, right? What you can't do is the reverse. You can't do something like three divided by zero. You can't do that because you can't have three items put into zero groups. They would have to be in some sort of a group. So this is not a valid equation. You will not see that. That does not work. It does not make sense. But you will see equations like this. If I have zero items divided into three groups, divided into six groups, however many groups, it's still going to be zero because I have no items. So that leads us to another important rule that zero divided by any number whoops, equals zero. Okay. Now, if you're working at home, you might want to write these little rules down on a piece of paper or on an index card, just so you kind of remember that as you go to do your assignment today. You're going to do some matching. And then you are going to record yourself explaining to me what are the rules for when you multiply any number by one, right? What are the rules for when you multiply any number by one? What is the rule when you divide any number by one? And what are the rules about the zeros, okay? So you're going to be recording yourself explaining these things to me. So make sure you have a real good sense of it. Good luck and have fun.